find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hello, Internet. Today is November 18th, 2014, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. On today's show, we talk a little bit of Lego movie sequels, Dumb and Dumber 2, uh, Interstellar, and uh, Peanuts. Everybody loves Peanuts. Love those Peanuts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Today, uh, this is episode 53. I can't believe we made it to 53. And uh, from Pittsburgh, PA, I am Rambling Mango, uh, Malango. And as usual, we have Sorg of Sorgatron Media. That's right. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the tweeters. Um, uh, su- surviving and getting over a cold. So I've been laid down and catching up on movies all weekend long, which also meant I couldn't get out to see Big Hero 6, unfortunately. Oh, you still haven't seen that? Nope. No, nope. probably. Uh, hopefully over Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, actually, that um, yes, that would be interesting. Well, yeah, uh, I was gonna get into movie math, but I'll stay away from that. But yes, uh, it'll be interesting to have a conversation after you see it because you you saw Interstellar, right? No, no, no. Hmm. Yeah, I go see Hero Six. That's gonna be fun. Speaking of movies, uh, the trailer of the week was good old Peanuts. Um. I like this trailer. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I appreciate this trailer. Um, so we had a little bit of a clip here uh, at the beginning, beginning, of course. But but generally, for those on audio and everything, I, it feels like peanuts. You know, yes, it's in 3D, but it's not like when they took the Smurfs into 3D and we had to add Neil Patrick Harris. But again, it's early. We don't know what they're going to end up doing with it. But it feels like it's just. The peanuts we more or less remember, right? Yeah. So there was an argument, uh, one of the podcasts or YouTube channels that I subscribe to, um, the the host had a problem with the fact that uh, she had some issues with some of the things that are being portrayed with, like Snoopy going to Paris and thinking that like they were going outside the realm of what um, – peanuts was from our childhood Mm -hmm. and i I think i disagreed with her a bit like i understand the like imagination side of it like we were never supposed to see these things it was supposed to be very grounded in some sort of like uh realism like this our neighborhood very simple kids with a strong story and i think the one thing that uh i most disagreed with her is like i like seeing that like that imagination like Snoopy in Paris, I thought it was awesome. I thought that was kind of fun. Um, and then on top of that, it's like, it's just a trailer. This isn't the movie. Yeah, this has nothing to do probably in the long run. Like, look at early, like, Smurfs trailers. We're getting Minions trailers uh, in, you know, Despicable Me trailers with just Minions singing, right? That has nothing to yeah. do with anything. Um, that, that, that's exactly what this is. It's, a, it's, it's for uh, Christmas 2015. We're a year out from this one. Um, I, it, it's captured my imagination as somebody has grown up on Peanuts. I share it with my mom's Facebook page. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely excited. And I did like the like the little thing that they did with uh, Charlie at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Like, oh, Charlie. So, uh, you know, where he drops all the peanuts. And, yeah, or, uh, the, the remember popcorn. when it was a big deal for something to get on, on the big screen? You know, like, like you know, that cartoon you've been watching is like, oh, it's going to be on the big screen. It's going to be awesome. Oh, my God. You know, like this, this gives me a little more of that feeling like, oh, like it's actually going to be like an upgraded version of what we see. Like yeah. the Simpsons on the big screen didn't feel like a bigger Simpsons episode. No, 
Not know? at all. But, I mean, I, I feel like we're just like, well, it's just in the theater. We're like, uh, can we do something with this, please? Anybody? Yeah, I would like to see. Like, I, and that's the other thing. I think the fact that they could like take a scenario and throw it in Paris. What what that does to help is like it it takes it away because all the other Charlie Brown um, peanuts movies that we have have been like specials, mm -hmm. like the thing, and they've all been tailored to television. But that's probably why people loved it because we were all home from like you know vacation or on holiday. We're all with our family, and you sit around, you know, and, and those are these are the kind of shows that you watch. And I think like. Seeing this on the big screen, I, I think this would be a good way to kind of step outside that to a larger scale. So, they'll, yeah, they'll definitely be interesting. Um, moving along, though, uh, just on the simple basis of movies, because this is a podcast about movies, there is a movie map, the box office this weekend. I am surprised at what happened. So the two big movies that came out, um, and by two big movies, let me preface this by one's a sequel that I did not think would make 36 million. The other one has extremely high ratings on Rotten Tomato, and I'm kind of surprised at what it made. But um, I would say that the other big surprise was I thought Hero 6, uh, Big Hero 6, would top the box office this week on its second week, and uh, it slipped to number two, to Dumb and Dumber 2, by all of about 2 million. Hmm. So... Uh, I know I have this story in our lineup uh, later on, but just in, <laughs> I just find this funny. I think it's funny, one, because um, in terms of the uh, movie podcast or the, the movie draft, uh, one of the people that I graded had bought both of these movies, Big Hero 6 and Interstellar. And I, and I knew like it had to, Interstellar had to hit a number for it to even be a success. And based on the slope that we're seeing, like these movies are are tanking, and I thought these movies would hold out. Um, and by tanking, that's all relative, right? Twenty eight million, thirty four million. They're still in the wheelhouse as we pull into a holiday weekend, but they're going up against. Um, uh, why can't I remember the Arrow freaking movie, Mocking Jay? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, the, Hunger the Hunger Games, yeah. Yeah, they're going up against the Hunger Games this weekend. So you have to think that these movies are going to drop off. I think, we're, did you say you were one of the people that were not interested in the Hunger Games anymore? Um, I, I wasn't first run ready to see it. You know, I saw it probably two weeks after it was out. Uh, the first one, I didn't even bother in the theater. I just finally saw the uh, Catching Fire a couple months ago. Yeah, and you um, saw that on Netflix, and, right? And I, yeah, and I, yeah, I saw it on Netflix. Um, I'm not interested, like, Whenever they split up these movies, give me a part one, part two. I'm not going to jump know. out and get it. I'm yeah, just not going to jump into it. The thing uh, annoys me beyond annoyance, mm -hmm. especially since I was one of the people that actually got the book after the last one to say, "Screw this! I'm not going to wait through two movies to see how this ends." So <laughs> good for them with that marketing. Um, but but generally, the people that are into it are going to go. So. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm going to go see it. I had a chance to see it for free, and I uh, those tickets kind of went pretty fast. But, yeah, like, I, I really don't want to spend money on this. I think I'll just wait. Maybe my brother's going to want to see this over Thanksgiving. But, yeah, that's – it's going to be interesting just in terms of that to see how these movies hold up once that comes out. Uh, but playing on that still, two of the top – or so of these top movies – Dumb and Dumber, um, the big surprise was the fact that this is the third movie in the franchise and the fact that it made 30, it, it was like 36 million, which I think more interesting is the fact that this was Jim Carrey's highest grossing, uh, like biggest opening weekend since, uh, what was it, Bruce Almighty. Which was wow. awesome. I, I felt like he. I felt like he's had other movies that should have been way better than that. But um. Well, do, you, just because he's yeah, going for like, like the, just because he's gone for, for like a lot of kind of the higher budget ones or the the like he's done like Cat in a Hat and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Or no, uh, I'm sorry, The Grinch. Um, I mean, this this, this is this is something that a lot of people remember, 
And they probably don't even remember that second one where they did the prequel with different people. But this was him returning to an old character. I think he'd do just as well if he did like an Ace Ventura or a Mask Return. See, really? Because that's the thing. Like, I think so. I, it's hard for me to see that parallel from our generation to say like, man, these people are still going out to see these movies. Because I th- remember I thought it would tank just because I didn't think a new demographic would care. But apparently... I would have to say it's our generation, right? That want to see this. Yeah, I think it's I think it's mostly uh, nostalgia, uh, bringing this back, and it's Jim Carrey doing the thing that we remember Jim Carrey being good at. Man, I mean that's impressive. I'll give it that. Uh, somewhere it had stated that uh, on Cinema Score they gave it a B minus, um, which is interesting because yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're thinking that this might hit a hundred million. I think they're crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, speaking of other movies that were in the top like four this weekend, Interstellar. So AMC is doing this deal for anybody that has a stub card. And basically, you can go and you can purchase unlimited watches of, of Interstellar. For, I, think, uh, I think they set the prices range between like 20, it was like $26 to like 35 and at specific AMC theaters, if you purchase this like unlimited pass, you can watch this movie as many times as you like. So here's my thing. It's a three-hour movie. It was good. It wasn't amazing. This is a, this is a great marketing ploy, but geez. <laughs> like, like, is that a movie you want to watch multiple times? Like, no. like probably to catch everything? <laughs> I, I don't know. Really? I don't, I don't get it. Like, who's going to sit there? Like, I mean, I saw it. This is a very special fan. That yeah. Is. I mean, and of course, they're playing it off as uh, fans of Christopher of Christopher Nolan. And for the, like, this is for the film yeah. students, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and you're reaching. Like, costs ranging from uh, 1999 to 34.99, depending on location. Mm-hmm. And you have to be a stub club uh, member. Who has already purchased the ticket for fourteen ninety nine? <laughs> like, I have no idea what this is playing. It's a money on. grab. I mean, it, 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 it's it's they're they're finding any way to bring you in the theater, any reason to bring you in the theater, um, because we can all just wait a couple months and get it at home on on our Xboxes, right? Um, I mean, that's that's what it is. This is another gimmick. And you're going to find more of this. And, the, and unfortunately, when you're looking at movie theaters, it's a high price gimmick, no matter what it is, because it's the movie theaters and they have eight dollar popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would love to see just based on the numbers and the way this movie's tanking. Yeah, this is a, you're right. This is a straight marketing ploy to say, hey, buy some extra money. I I mean, compared to like. I think they said ultimately this movie's brought in just shy of three hundred or yeah, three hundred and twenty one million worldwide. So I'm pretty sure they've made their money back. I would have to look that up. But yeah, they must see the writing on the wall as this is the potential to probably not be his his highest grossing uh moneymaker film. But yeah, uh speaking of money making films, how do you think about more female character roles in the Lego movie sequel. Uh, good for girls. Yeah, I think I think generally the Lego movie. I thought they did. I thought they did good with a f- strong female lead in general. But um, yeah, I but, but, I thought the lead was well. Well, I thought she. I yes, I agree. I like the lead. Yeah, I mean it, it's um, the Le- Lego can. <sighs> Well, first of all, getting getting girls in the Legos, and, and I know they've had like pink Legos or whatever, um, but getting girls in the Legos is really good just for, geez, STEM, you know, uh, in, in general. So, so good, yeah. I, I I think it's good, especially especially since they are they are mentioning here in the article they're already doing a spinoff Batman and Ninjago, uh, yeah. standalone films. So so to have something more, you know, for everyone, I think I think works out. I have a feeling that, and I mean, I know this is just me. I know Mad Mike had a very strong opinion to liking these movies. I think this is too much. Like, uh, just based on the Lego franchise, this just seems like... I like the first one because it just seemed like fresh, new, way out of left field. 
with like a lot of originality. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I have a feeling that these, like, I don't know. I'd like to see this. I, I already said last, like a couple weeks ago, I will not be seeing the Batman spinoff nor the standalone. Ninja, nin, well, you, it's going to Ninjago, I think it is. There's a series on on television, and that's who it's for. It, it's that we talked about those cartoons, and now they're going to be on the big screen. This is that kind of thing. Um, the I I I think we're going to get to a point where we're not going to go see a Lego movie because it's a Lego movie. Um, I'm going to go see the Batman Lego movie because it's a Batman Lego movie. I like the Lego movie. I like the with the Batman Lego, uh, and love the games. So mm-hmm. the movie I think is going to be, you know, pretty cool. Um, and, uh, but Ninjago, no, that's, that's, that's for some, that's, that's a kid's show and I'm not into it. Um, but the kids will go, you know, I mean, it'll be smart enough. I don't know how the show is. Uh, I've watched not the Ninjago, but they had another one, uh, some kind of uh, mystical one uh, that 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 or, or, or fantasy based Lego show, and and it was it's all right, you know, it's it's a kid show, uh, but uh, no, no, it, it, this is going to turn into like franchise. You're going to get sick of the two Lego movies a year. They're going to start pumping out of this thing. Uh, Definitely. it's like as much, just like on a side tangent, as much as like the movie industry wants to pull us in mm-hmm. to theaters to see movies, I feel like the way things are going, it's going to push people away to just say, Hey, I'm just going to sit and watch this movie. And, and also like, it's like, oh. you're already, they're already doing like straight to DVD Lego movies. Yeah. So like, what are you going to do again? That's going to be special. That's going to push these to the theaters and want me to go to a theater instead of just, you know, picking up if my kid's into the Lego stuff, you know, on, on DVD or digital or whatever I'm doing. So uh, it's sad, 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 sad news, sadness. Speaking of just sad news and franchises, what would you say if I said, hey, Mike, you know, Fast and the Furious. Yeah, there will be a seven coming out next year sure and you know i think this would be a good way for them to like wrap this thing up uh, oh. in a good way you know yeah, I, want more fa- I want more fast cor- cars i want, want more vin diesel i want more random ufc and wrestling people popping up in there i just watched <laughs> fast and the furious six over the weekend right yeah. i am all down and ready for some more fast and the furious michelle but, rodriguez but, uh, is back the band is back together we, we can do no wrong with this no it, it's it's a all you need, like, you don't even need everybody. They just got everybody back, and obviously we're not going to have the one dude for a while here. Paul Walker um, will not be there. Well, Paul Walker this. will not be there for the, the, the next three after this. Uh, you, think they, you think they change up the story completely after this? I mean, they are. They already said yeah, they you are. Won't even so they laid... You won't even notice. You won't even notice. It, it'll well, be... no, no. Like, it... look, here's, all right, to their credit, they laid down the framework. But like I mean, obviously now with Paul Walker being gone, they have laid down a, a potential storyline where we know like these people are getting killed off. Their team is people are coming after their team, right? So unless they decide to do some crazy CG where Paul Walker drives off into the sunset and says, "I'm really done, guys," and they leave it at that, where we just know, okay, he's obviously not coming back. Where else do they take this franchise? Like, why do we need an eight, nine, and ten? Because it makes money. Why you always ask? Why do we need? And, and it is money, dude. <laughs> if they can, and uh, uh, Vin Diesel, you know, uh, is going to keep doing them so he can fund his Reddick sequels that he loves doing, um, and whatever that else he true. does, you know, and his video game company is that if that's still going? I don't uh, know if that's still going. I don't, I don't know. I actually have no idea. Uh, but I think it's um, no. I I think it's a fun series. Uh, I had a blast watching Fast Six over the weekend. Six was good. Six was I, Six was a lot of fun. I will defend Six. Six was, was Gina Carano in there. Uh, man, it was it, the vehicular warfare stuff they did, and the tank, and oh man, oh man, and the swerve, and the, like this is the one where we were watching the trailer, and I remember they said, "There's, there's." vehicular combat and you see like a plane flying at something and you're like oh my god this is going to be so over the top i mean the worst one to me the worst one was was the sequence where they were driving through the mines in like four or five probably four um and uh and just the cg was so bad and it gets rough in this 
Even that plane sequence gets rough, dude. <laughs> it gets interesting, but it was fun. It was a blast. I love these movies. Stuff is blowing up. Ridiculous stuff with cars. I'm into it. I'm completely into I, it. And I'll, I'll be completely into it the whole way through. I'm just waiting for the day when we have Fast and the Furious Expendables. The mashup. Or Expendable Fast and the Furious 25. Hey, why not? Why not, dude? That's where we're leading. That's where all roads hey, lead. Hey, what'd you watch over this weekend? Uh, so, well, why don't you go first? Because my weekend's been... Uh, well, I mentioned Fast better. and the Furious. I think you got the gist of that one. Like I said, I was, I was, I was, I was in bed. I was sick. I was watching WWE Network for like three days straight. Just put the stream on. Like, give me whatever Hulk Hogan crap you got on here. I'm gonna, I, I'm just gonna ingest this right now while while I'm healing up and dozing off into the fever dream. Um, but, uh, but, but as I was getting better, we watched a bunch of movies. Uh. Django Unchained. I got to I actually finished off the last forty minutes of that today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing uh, at me? I think my comic strip for that was just white people uncomfortable. Oh man, it was it. Man, that was that was kind of rough. Um, but but it, you know what? Like it, it's this generation's blazing saddles, isn't it? I yeah, I guess. I mean, if, if we want to say that, they started off saying, "Hey, it's a." black person on a horse isn't that how blazing saddle started Is that how it started? I, I feel like that that like that same sequence same uh language and, and everything uh, <laughs> by the way um and i feel like this applies to any quentin tarantino quentin Tan- tarantino film uh if you're uncomfortable with the n-word just do not apply here um oh, yeah. and even more so oh my god I wonder, I wonder how many people he had to like go and get like approval to use that word <laughs> But do you think there's a process? I don't know. I don't know. I feel, I, does this come up at the meetings? No, um, but I feel like he, he of all people, would go around saying, like, you know, I want to make sure this is truly authentic. And I know. And, uh, why, why are you kidding me? Did you watch this movie? Yes, I watched this movie. It's the yes, bloodiest know, Western not, I've ever seen. I know it's not like... <laughs> uh, for what the movie is... He did say it like there was an article that did say that he wanted to make this at least feel like what that would have been like. And then, they you know, what? It, it, if you took Pulp they, Fiction and put it in the old West, this is yeah. exactly what it would feel like. Yeah, I think I think uh, it was very accurate to that point. Uh, but no, that was a lot of fun. Like I said, we also checked out Riddick. Um, I don't know. I was on a Vin Diesel kick. I loved Riddick. Riddick reminds me a lot of Pitch Black. Yeah, like it, they basically just said we're going to do Pitch Black again. Um, and well, he's, he'd been wanting to do that forever. I, and and I really enjoyed it. I it, it 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 reminded me how much I enjoyed Pitch Pitch Black. Um, and I hope I hope they do more. And I hope they're 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 kind of more. Uh, he doesn't need to get stranded on every damn planet. But uh, you know, I enjoyed this more than Chronicles <laughs> of, of Riddick. Um, also watched Snowpiercer, which we talked about that, that kind of weirdly released uh, with Chris Evans, like in the middle of summer. Um, it was a really good film. You could tell it was a low budget. It was like you're on a train. There's only so much, but but the people they have it's ridiculous. Um, Captain America. Captain America's in it for one thing. Um, it, uh, is is the one guy a spoiler at the end that he's in it? Is he no, listed? Not so Ed oh, Harris. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Because they they don't. Well, Ed Harris is in it, um, and also yeah. Dumbledore, Dumbledore is in it, and uh, and a couple other, I can't remember, there's a couple other people I recognized in there, um, but it was good. It, you know, it's one of those, was this a book? It had. It felt like it was a book. Like, it felt, oh, it had that know. kind of Hunger Games-ish vibe to it, um, but it's basically, they're on a train, they've been on a train for about 17 years uh, since, uh, I, I, I can't remember why, but the earth, the earth is cold. And yeah, uh, global the, warming, basically. and it, was it global warming? I thought it was like a, maybe a comet or something. So, no, they tried to like kind of like the, the Matrix thing where they like tried to torch the the sky or we something. We screwed it up, we screwed it up. That's that's what it, it boils down to, right? Yeah. Um, but no, that was a lot of fun. Um, and, and as I'm thinking back, this must have been really forgettable. Three days to kill with uh, Kevin Costner, it was all right. It was all right. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that for it what was, it was. It was fun because it like because he's like completely like doing the I'm a CIA operative that's trying not to die, uh, and I have 
so many days to live and I'm trying to uh, get in good graces with my estranged uh, teenage daughter. Yeah. And trying to understand teenagers. Um, it, it was fun. It was, it, it's, 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 it's kind of rough to see old Kevin Costner, but, um, but no, it was enjoyable. <laughs> So, so uh, you you finished White Collar, right? I uh, no, I don't think I caught up with that. No, oh, uh, you didn't. Was it? What was the one that we always watched on USA? Burn uh, Notice. Burn Notice. I have not caught up on Burn oh, Notice. Oh, you need to. Well, it's like the like. There's a big thing with the USA. Is it USA or TBS? I don't know. Either way, um, they're all coming to a conclusion, and they're all like popping up on Netflix. So that's what I've been doing. Oh, I've yeah. Oh, yeah. Of- yeah, because uh, uh, USA is never really uh, they don't play the Hulu game. Yeah, uh, like they won't. If you have plus, you won't be able to see them on your TV. And and they only have the last like several episodes up regardless. So yeah. that's always been so- a difficulty for me. Um, I think we may have ended up purchasing that last season of Burn Notice just to watch it. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I um, I'm, I had to finish up season four. So I'm two seasons behind on White Collar. And I am caught up with Arrow. Oh, man. What do you and think? Season two was freaking awesome. I enjoyed it very much. Season three, I quickly went from an extreme high to a, oh, my gosh, I can't believe they did that. And now I'm caught up and it is good and stressful. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Um, I I had this joke with uh, one of my coworkers where um because she likes the main actor who plays Arrow mm-hmm. and I always laugh at his of his acting uh, emotional states which as you see through seasons he he has that same monotone where it's just like I'm happy I'm sad I'm angry it's like are, are you really like it's all like that fake plastic uh like. Uh, what, what was Barbie? He's a burning uh, superhero. A Ken doll. Yeah, but he, you but it's he's a funny because you see him. You see him really trying to like have that emotional like. <laughs> it's like oh, this guy. This guy's a funny actor. But I love his supporting. His supporting the supporting cast on that show is just phenomenal. So, but based on that, I am caught up with Arrow. I am also loving Gotham. Mad Mike, if you listen to this show later, Gotham is just getting better. Oh, big uh, time. Big time. Especially after the big blow up a couple weeks ago. Yep. And then uh, finally, um, there's a show. It's a Netflix original uh, called Peaky Blinders. Um, check this show out. It's about six episodes a season. It's really good. Um, I forget who the main guy is. I feel like he's he usually plays a bad guy. It's like Tom but, Hardy, and it, it looks, this looks like the guy that played Scarecrow. Yes, he did play Scarecrow. That's that's where I was like I couldn't picture where he was from. But um, and Tom Hardy's in this, so this is like is this like a a, a, a Chris Nolan joint or something? I don't uh, think it's a Chris silly, Nolan silly, joint. Cillian Cillian Murphy. I don't think it's Chris Nolan joint, but it's got a lot of his people in there. Yeah, it's very it's it's a very good show. Um, if you like gangster Irish mob, it's not even mob. It's just it's just a it's a it's just good. So I'll just leave it with that. Okay. But uh, but yeah, do you got anything to plug? I'm pretty sure there's a pod camp. There is thing a pod camp there. Pittsburgh this weekend. Podcamppittsburgh dot com. I'll be there. We'll be doing an awesome awesome cast live there on Sunday. Um, and I'll probably be teaching a session or two about video podcasting. Uh, so go check that out and it will be streaming all weekend and the videos will be up, uh, afterwards in due time. I'm sure, uh, over at podcampispberg.com. It's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. So, uh, that's all I got. Otherwise, please go check out everything at sorgatronmedia.com, pittsburghwrestling.com, uh, all the places and then my site over at sorgatron.com as well. Nice. And we have a Facebook group at uh, Rambling Movie Minute. So definitely go over there and, you know, add yourself to our group. We like to post up fun, random stuff on movies, trailers, stuff like that. And have discussions about it. Yes. Deep, deep discussions. Now, I don't know if it's deep discussions, but it's always fun to see, like, the random stuff. I should have posted the Snoopy thing to there. Um, also, uh, 
I'm not working on the on the comic strip right now because we're getting into the holiday stuff. But uh, hopefully soon I will. Actually, I still have to talk to you about this, Mike. You were sick last week. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, well, stuff. There might be stuff in the works. So if you are interested in possibly um, joining a movie draft that we might be having, send us an email um, to our show or let us know on our Facebook group page. I think we we could start uh, setting one up for January's movie lineup. All righty. Start getting that ready. But, um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, where can we find you, Sorg? Oh, we already did that stuff. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, my tag. You can find me at Rambling Mango. Uh, that's my Twitter tag. Yes. Ha, <laughs> uh, But, yes, with that, until next week, have a Rambling Movie Weekend. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>